The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And I'm so excited to introduce to you the founders of Thyroid Refresh. And one of them, they're kind of the dynamic duo. One is Jenny Mahar and the other is Dana Bowman. So welcome ladies. Hi, thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Thank you. So let's start with you, Jenny. Tell us a little bit about what got you to create a support community for thyroid patients. Well, Dana and I are both thyroid patients ourselves. And I know personally, I spent four years really not understanding what was going on in my body. I didn't even know I had autoimmune hypothyroidism. I had never been tested for that or educated on that by my doctor. And I spent uh, four years of my life. It was actually the first four years of my son's life because I was diagnosed uh, shortly after he was born. Tired all day, every day, sick all the time. I mean, and I was somebody who had a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of drive, a lot of spark. And all of a sudden I just felt sick, tired, flat. I couldn't lose the baby weight. What's going on? And my doctor is just telling me, well, you're being treated for hypothyroidism, your TSH is normal, so everything else must be unrelated. And, you know, that wasn't really the case. It ended up, um, I really needed to take the reins of my health and start looking at not only some underlying root causes, but also my lifestyle and what I was eating in order to reclaim my health. And when when I sort of hit rock bottom and made the choice to do that, It was really just a matter of months before I got my energy and my life back. And that was a profound life experience for me that changed everything. I'm a professional chef and a cooking instructor. It changed the way my career went, the way I eat, um, everything. So that's how I ended up, you know, deciding that I really wanted to... uh, connect with other people. I felt so alone on that journey. I wanted to connect with other people and share my healing journey with them and share the recipes I was creating with them. And that's how Dana found me. She's the former founder of uh, Thyroid Nation, which is a very well-known thyroid site. And that's how Dana and I connected and we just hit it off and we ended up having some ideas of about because of this shared journey that we've both been on, we had some exciting ideas about what we could do to support other thyroid patients like us so they didn't have to suffer for so long, so needlessly alone and without support. So that's how Thyroid Refresh was born. So let's start with someone who, let's say they go to the doctor, their doctor says, look, you are, you do need to be on thyroid medication. They're on thyroid medication, but they are still having problems with weight loss. They still are tired. They still have brain fog. They just still have a lot of those symptoms, even if they are on thyroid medicine. What would you say are some of the the biggest pieces to the puzzle that you've seen are kind of red flags of Mm -hmm. why this is still happening? Well, I can tell you a couple right off the bat. It's not that simple. Medication doesn't get rid of your symptoms. So you need to become your own advocate, as Jenny mentioned earlier. And you need to look at your labs. You need to have a copy of your labs. And you need to start being an investigator. You need to look deeper. There are lots of things that can go on behind the scenes that cause cause your thyroid to actually get out of whack in the first place in the first place. So you need to dig a little deeper, get to the root cause. It's like one of the main things. And so for me, it was researching, reading books as much as I could do. There wasn't very many people I could connect with. That's another thing that's really, really helpful is to connect with other people. You can learn so much from other people's journey, right? When you, when you see someone who's feeling terrible, just like you are, and who's gone to the doctor and the doctor's been, here's the medicine. And you're like, okay, so I took the medicine, I did what you said, and it's still not working. And then you have five other people who are going through the same thing. There's a shared you know, experience there so that you can kind of lean on each other's experiences and things. So, you know, finding a community, asking questions, digging a little deeper, 
uh, getting a copy of your labs and learning a little bit about it, not just taking the doctor's word. Here's, here's the labs. You're in the normal range. Here's the medicine. Go on your way. At this point, as thyroid advocates, you really need to kind of take the reins. You really need to learn a little bit more. That's what I would say. What do you think, Jenny? Yeah, I would just, you know, build on that by, you know, talking about just some nuts and bolts things like knowing that your doctor may not really educate you on this. That's why it's so important. That's why we're really emphasizing you really have to um, do some of your own detective work. You may need a new doctor. A lot of patients find that they do better with a more whole health oriented practitioner, like a naturopath, a functional MD, um, even holistic nutritionists, health coaches, these people who look at the body as a whole system can be extremely helpful in sorting out your big picture. Another thing that's really important is making sure that your medication is optimized, right? So one of the big issues for thyroid patients is that the uh, standard of treatment is to test TSH only. TSH is your thyroid stimulating hormone. And that it is a good indicator, but it isn't the only indicator. So we really stress that people need to ask for a complete thyroid panel that includes other tests like uh, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and your thyroid antibodies. That was part of my story. I didn't even know I had Hashimoto's. I had only been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. So it just limited like my understanding of what was happening in my body. Once I asked for the test, the antibodies test and found out that I had Hashimoto's, that just opened up this whole other world of information on autoimmunity and all the things that come into play with that. So really important to ask for that complete thyroid panel. And one of the thing that, things that, that the results of that will help you with is optimizing your medication. So the normal ranges are much wider than the optimal ranges. So a lot of these holistic health practitioners, like your functional MDs and stuff, they've got a much more narrow range for where those labs need to be. So you want to get those labs into the optimal range, not just the normal range, but the optimal range and the optimal range for you. And those can also, those labs can also show you do I need to be on a different medication? Maybe I need to add a medication. Like a lot of us are on synthetic T4 or um, thyroid hormone replacement medication, like levothyroxine. Okay, that's sort of like the, it's actually the third most prescribed drug in the United States. A lot of us have a conversion issue where we're not converting that T4 medication into T3. T4 is the inactive form of thyroid hormone and T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. So if we're not converting that into the active form of thyroid hormone, we're not really getting you know, the energy that we need from that medication. Our TSH might be normal, but you know, that, that complete thyroid panel will show you things like that. And if you, if you have a conversion issue where you're not converting your medication, you're gonna struggle with weight gain, fatigue, all kinds of other symptoms, you know, hair loss and all those other typical thyroid symptoms could be a major problem for you if you're not optimizing your medication. And then after that, you know, I would say just really ruling out a lot of underlying issues. There, there's so several. Yeah. Are you both on thyroid medicine right now? Yes, we are. And we're on totally different thyroid medication. So you can know, you share that with us? Sure. What dosage you're on and what's worked for you? Yeah, definitely. For me, when I was diagnosed, I was living in Costa Rica and I was properly diagnosed with Hashimoto's, but the only medicine they had was just the T4 medicine. So I could only get the synthetic T4 and I felt terrible. It did not work for me. And it wasn't until I started asking questions, digging a little deeper that I found out, hey, there's other kinds of medicine. So I went to the pharmacy because you can just go to the pharmacy and ask for medicine. And I asked for the, you know, T3, T4, synthetic or natural desiccated thyroid. And they were like, no, no, no. We have one medicine here in Costa Rica and that's what you get. So it wasn't until we came back to the States that I was able to finally get on natural desiccated thyroid. And once I did, whoo. 
my world opened up. It was so much better. I had more energy. I mean, just things, things started working right for me. So I definitely need the natural desiccated thyroid. I'm on nature thyroid and I take 65 grains, a 65 um, gram grain. Let's see. I take two and a half of those, two of those a day now. So that's what I'm on. And what time do you take it? In the morning. Definitely best to take in the morning. I mean, you know, it, it depends, you know, because you, you do have that T3 in there and that can give you a little energy um, spurt. I know that Jenny kind of, did you still spread yours out a little bit, Jenny, or do you still take both of them together in the morning? I still take both of mine together in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so, I, go ahead, Jenny, tell us what oh, you're Oh, I was just going to say, I uh, was originally put on uh, just levothyroxine, like generic, and that I definitely didn't feel well on that. I, you know, had heard from so many other thyroid patients that they feel better on natural desiccated thyroid like Dana is on, which is um, made from, it's porcine, it's made from the thyroid glands of pigs. And so it has not just T4, but it also has T3, T2, and T1 in it. It's like this really complete, um, <laughs> spectrum of, of thyroid hormone that it includes because it is more natural. Now I tried that and it did not work for me. This just goes to show everyone is different and what works for one person may not work for another. So what I really found worked best for me was I'm on tyrosine, which is a hypoallergenic, highly absorbable, uh, synthetic T4 and I found that I was not converting that T4 very well. So um, my doctor and I decided to add a little bit of T3. So it's, I think I'm on 75 micrograms of tyrosine, and then I believe it's five micrograms of lyothyronine um, that is compounded in a time release formula at a compounding pharmacy. So instead of getting a blast of that active thyroid hormone all at once, it like drips into my system throughout the day. So there's a lot, you know, the takeaway, there's so many options and uh, so many patients don't know that there's more than just one option for medication. There's different combinations and dosages and even different brands. Some have different fillers and things. And we've actually got a ton of information on this on thyroid refresh for anyone who's interested. Um, you can check out um, under our programs. We have a levothyroxine deep dive that tells mm. you so much about, you know, really going deep, deep into what's in each brand even what are the fillers you know some people have an issue with the fillers that are used in different medications so it really is just a process of trial and error and finding that perfect medication combo for you that's great and i used to be on t4 only or synthroid and that was horrible for me i was sicker and sicker i was getting worse and worse i then actually moved to armor thyroid then i moved to wp thyroid and then i now take a comp i'm on a very low dosage but i take only 5 um micrograms of cytomel which is t3 only mm -hmm. and I take a low dose, very low dosage of WP thyroid and I do it twice a day. So for me, what was happening is at two o'clock, I would just, I'd be fine in the morning, but around two, I would just completely crash. And so now at two o'clock, I take another small dosage of both T3 only Cytomel and uh, WP thyroid. Oh, and just but, look at the three of us. I mean, right? just right yeah. there is completely <laughs> different. Yeah. Right. Right. And it, it is like, it's, it's kind of like, I kind of call it like Goldilocks. Cause it's like, you know, it's like, you can't have too much of this and you can't have too little of that. You know, it's mm -hmm. gotta be just right. just right. And if it's not just right, you're going to feel absolutely miserable. And I don't even at this point right now, what happened was I started messing around with too much T3 because I, I read something about how, you know, you probably, if you have a lot of gut issues, you're probably not because I have some constipation issues. So I'm probably not converting my T4 to T3. So I started upping my T3 only. 
And then I started feeling really bad because I had too much T3. So, um, Ginny, I'd like for you to talk a little bit more about the benefits. Well, two things I want to ask you. One is, did you guys hear about the recall of Nature Throid and WP Thyroid? I think it was like August 25th that the RLC Labs announced a voluntary consumer level recall of un unexpired lots of nature thyroid and WP thyroid because some of the lots contain less than the required 90% of the active ingredient. Did you guys hear about that? We sure did. Yes. And there was another uh, recall of, was it NP thyroid, Dana, where they, Mm -hmm. yeah, they actually just got an official warning from the FDA for lax controls. They had some high potency batches go Mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to talk about, uh, Jenny, I'd like you to talk about the whole idea of getting your thyroid medicine at a compound pharmacy. And what does that mean? You know, what, what does Mm -hmm. someone need to do to be able to get that and how does it work? And what was the difference you felt going from one to going to a compounding pharmacy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. Um, I, I ended up uh, needing to work with a different doctor, a whole health oriented doctor, like we talked about. And I live in Western Montana. My best option here was a naturopath and she's amazing. She's changed my life. So immediately that was one, I think in our first appointment, she told me, Hey, this is an option. You don't have to just get the brand name stuff. We can have something compounded for you. We have a couple local compounding pharmacies where they actually like they're filling their own caplets with the formula that they, you, that your doctor has decided is best for you, then they can create that pill or capsule for you. So like one thing we did is um, the filler in my compounded time release T3 medication, it it has uh, probiotics in it. It's got um, acidophilus. You know, so you can even get down to what's in the filler. How is that working for you? Do you, it, like say a lot of us have um, food sensitivities to things like gluten, dairy, um, art, several artificial ingredients. There's all kinds of fillers in a lot of these synthetic thyroid meds. So I know I feel a lot better um, eliminating those fillers both in in terms of tyrosin, which is hypoallergenic, as I mentioned, um, and then with the compounded time-release T3. So the the time-release, I think the the term they use at the compounding pharmacy is um, sustained release. So that's another thing that they can do at a compounding pharmacy is they can make that T3 so it drips into your system throughout the day. And what that can do is eliminate the need for some people like you, where they're having to take multiple doses throughout the day. Um, I don't have that slump so much because it just, that T3, I take it in the morning and it just drip, 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 drips into my system, you know, in that sustained release. So it offers a lot of flexibility. I mean, you can really get down into the the nitty gritty with exactly what you want in your medication and how you want it to work. Even the dosages, I know like um, a lot of the T4 medications, for example, they come in those 25 microgram, um, you know, dosages, right? So you're going from 50 to 75. Well, maybe somebody needs 65. Yeah. So that's what you can do at a compounding pharmacy as well. Yeah, that's great. I think that that's wonderful. So, um, what was your step like when you when you did that? Because you know, I think it kind of what happens is someone goes to the doctor, right, and they're like, "Here you go. Here's your prescription," right? So then, you know, the person's just like, "Okay, I'm going to take it to to CVS." So if if your doctor says to you, "Okay, here's your prescription. I'm giving you this," then what do you, you just need to go to them and say, listen, I would like to go to a compounding pharmacy instead, like walk someone through the steps mm-hmm. of that. Cause I think what happens is yeah. people just get kind of get like robot, right? They're like, right. 
they come see you and they go, okay, you're going to be on armor thyroid or nature thyroid or whatever. They've tried that. So walk them through the process of switching. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of doctors can be um, resistant to even offering other medication options like natural desiccated thyroid. So first off, you, you may end up sort of hitting a roadblock with your doctor. And, and it's really very quick. common that you need to find a new doctor. Yeah, really quick, just a real ca- a caveat there to add, Jenny, is that if they do do that, ask them to put that in writing to give you a copy and put that in your file if they deny you any different medication changes or any oh, yeah. labs. They, nine times out of 10, don't like that. And they will give you what you want. If you ask them for that in writing, okay, you know, could I, I heard on a podcast, a great podcast that I, I, you know, would be wonderful to try X, Y, Z. Can I do that? And they say, yeah, no, we don't, whatever. Okay, well, that's fabulous. Great. Whatever your system is, would you mind putting that in writing, giving me a copy and putting that in my file? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of um, them turning a patient down at that point. So just a little caveat there that that's a little trick you can do. If you, you know, of course, finding a different doctors, you know, always, but sometimes people don't have that option. There may just be one doctor, you know, in town or, or it may under be uh, under their own plan that they have, you know, their medical plan insurance and things. So, you know, that's just something you can keep back in the back of your mind. Yeah, that's a great tip. And I think, you know, just underlines that people really need to be their own advocates. And um, the other thing that uh, happens to a lot of thyroid patients is they might find that they do really well on a brand name like Synthroid or Unithroid or something like that. And they go to their pharmacy and it's like, well, how come I got the generic or I do better on generic versus this? And well, this is what we had. So this is what you're getting. And you can ask your doctor to really specify, no, this is the brand that works for me. These fillers make a difference. Or, hey, I've looked into compounding pharmacies. I'd like to use this pharmacy. I found that um, the compounding pharmacy I use here, because it's not a, a chain, I mean, they know my name when I go in. They're like, hey, Jenny, how you doing? How's the family? You know, I mean, how are you feeling? I mean, it's it feels a lot more like a really uh, active relationship between my doctor, my compounding pharmacist, and me versus just you go through the drive-through at the chain pharmacy and you get what you get, and maybe it's what you wanted and maybe it isn't. And if you're not feeling well dealing with that you really do have to kind of be prepared to maybe put your foot down and advocate for yourself. Hey, no, this is what I need, or I want to try something else. And, you know, I'd really like to keep working with you, but if that's not an option, I'm going to have to work with someone else. Yeah. Well, I think the other piece that people really need to look into is the sustained release, right? Mm -hmm. Because that makes a big difference because some people that's the the kind of the missing piece of the puzzle that's missing for them is that sustained release. Talk about that for just a second. Yeah. um, Well, you know, we, we touched on it a little bit before, but just that issue of um, having the blast of like T3, especially that can spike people where they take it. And it's like, I feel great until noon. And then I'm flatline and just sort of going downhill the rest of the day that can eliminate that. Um, Dan also touched on like, well, we both take our meds in the morning and most people do that. Um, Some people do also take their meds at night. And I know that can like sort of tweak things for people if they're say taking t3 especially that active form of thyroid hormone that really you can feel more of a a energy boost from it a little bit you know taking t t3 at night is that's not sustained release you're going to potentially have difficulty sleeping and things like that so Um, it can eliminate some issues like that to do the sustained release. And I'm kind of surprised that more uh, synthetic T3 doesn't come in sustained release. Uh 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does your cytomel come in sustained release? I don't think Not that I know of. I don't think so. And that's why I felt so terrible when I was taking Mm -hmm. that. I was, I think I was just taking too much of it. And so I was taking it several times a day and I just felt terrible. I was really Mm -hmm. feeling horrible at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, obviously you can swallow your thyroid medicine and get excellent results. It works, but you can also take your thyroid medicine sublingually under the tongue. And for me personally, I had a massive change once I started doing that. I just started doing it recently. And, you know, sublingually, all I do is literally in the morning, I just literally stick it under my tongue and let it melt. But it I guess if you've got some real gut issues, that is a problem. And, you know, first of all, it's direct and immediate. It's absorbed into your bloodstream via the millions of tiny capillaries that line your mouth and your mucous membrane. Um, But again, if you've got some stomach acid problems, if you've got some gut issues, you know, some issues with metabolizing, you know, things in your liver, liver that, you know, it can be a problem. So let's talk about that. Have you seen people have a huge kind of shift once they start doing it sublingually or, and how do you guys take it? Yeah, I tried doing that before and I didn't really notice that much of a difference for me. So it's good to hear that you did. I, um, I don't think that we've, I haven't really talked to too many people who take it siblingly, but I've tried it before. So basically, you know, the natural desiccated thyroid, you, know, you just let it sit under your tongue until it dissolves, right? Because like you said, it, it, does, it does get absorbed immediately. But I haven't really um, heard of anybody uh, that we know of or talked to. Jenny, what about you? Yeah, that's actually, yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree with Dana, we don't hear about that so much. Um, I just swallow mine. I, I don't take it sublingually. I have like the absorbability issue is something we hear about more that kind of ties into that, um, where some people, depending on the brand, depending on their gut health, depending on how their liver's doing and things like that may have a problem really absorbing their medication. So like when I switched to tyrosine, which is, um, it's not a tablet, it's like a gel cap. So it's liquid and it's, you know, very pure. Um, I ended up having to temporarily go down in my dosage because I was absorbing more of the meds. So I was, I just didn't need as much. So that can, can make a big difference, but, um, yeah, we haven't we haven't heard from a ton of people who talk about the big difference between sublingual versus just swallowing it. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own, or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Something yeah, I've also into. heard of people who who have taken it sublingually and they say they do have to take a much lower door lower, I'm sorry. Yeah. A lower dose because, you know, maybe they have stomach acid issues. They might have bacteria overgrowth, candida issues, acid reflux issues. Mm -hmm. And so all of those things can interfere with how well you're absorbing your thyroid medicine. And so for me personally, I know it made a big difference and I've seen it happen in a lot of other people and they've actually had success with it and they've actually reduced the amount that they've had to take because they're absorbing it through their mouth so much better than their gut. But nine times out of 10, it's because of people who have gut issues Mm -hmm. anyway, right? So if your gut's kind of on the right track, it probably won't make too much of a difference. Yeah, there's and there's other things that can affect that too. Like even if you drink coffee in the morning, you know, things like that can significantly interfere with how much you're absorbing your medication or how much you're converting. So those little those daily choices can make a big difference in how much medication you need. 
So let's talk about that because a lot of people obviously drink coffee in the morning. So what does that affect do and what is your routine to combat that? Well, it depends on the person. And I think, you know, if you're like what a Mary Showman is a renowned thyroid advocate and she sits at the head of our thyroid refresh advisory board and her take on it is if you're going to drink coffee in the morning, you know, um, of course you want to wait an hour after taking your medication at least, but, um, you know, if you're taking that, if you're drinking coffee daily, then you're, whether it's like affecting how much you absorb or convert is going to be sort of regular because that's a daily habit you're doing. Right. So you can adjust based on this. Now, if all of a sudden you start drinking coffee and you find that you need more medication or it's throwing things off, then that's something to look at. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're doing this habitual thing some, some people, I mean, that's what our lives are. Our lives are comprised of our little daily habits that we, that we choose. Right. So what's, that's going to affect what the right dosage is for us. And even when, you know, when is the best time for you personally to take your medication and things like that, you know? Um, so it really just depends on the individual, but yeah, coffee is, um, yeah, I mean, some of us can't, you know, we just can't go without our coffee in the morning. So, and I know that hour between waking up and having a cup of coffee in the morning for some people, it's like the longest hour of the day. Like, is it time yet? Um, well, yeah. My, is that um, what you guys do? You take it and then you wait an hour and then have your coffee? I actually don't drink coffee. I and don't, I don't tea, drink coffee but I, either. I do get pretty excited <laughs> about my cup of tea in the morning for sure. So yeah, it's like, can I have that yet? Yeah. But most so of the people I know. Before you have your tea as well. What's that? You have, you wait an hour before you have your tea as well from oh, the time yeah. that you take that. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'll really consume after for an hour after I take my medication is water, if anything. Yeah. Yeah. So what, so if someone does have that tea, what's going on in the body? What is it affecting when they're having that tea with the, with the thyroid medicine? I was just going to say, you know, it can cause, it can make the, the potency level. I'm sure it can change, you know, whether, whether you're consuming as much as your body needs to or not, whether you're getting that medication or not. Um, I don't know if it has to do with, is it the caffeine, Jenny? Yeah, I mean, there's the caffeine, there's what it does to your cortisol levels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit hard on your adrenals. I mean, caffeine isn't necessarily something that's recommended for thyroid patients. And a lot of people find they do much better without it. Yeah, but um, I want to say it's something like it can, drinking, you know, caffeine, can affect how much you absorb and or convert your thyroid meds by like 40%. I mean, it, it makes a difference. Yeah. So that's gonna, and you know, there's other supplements and things, you know, even fiber can affect that overdoing it on fiber, things like that. Um, Calcium, I think it's calcium and iron. You don't want to take within four hours of your medication. So there's all kinds of little things that, that factor into that. Okay. So that's what I wanted you guys to do is to give me kind of the top five things that you've seen. Let's say that somebody kind of has their medicine under control. They've kind of got the Mm -hmm. right dosage there, but they're still not feeling great. What would you say the top five factors uh, or tips that you could say that you go, here's some tweaks that we've seen people do? with their Mm -hmm. diet, with this, with that, that they've really been able to shift and bring their thyroid into full functioning order. Mm -hmm. So um, first is, well, you know, you've got to have a health practitioner that's going to help you do this detective work. So that can be, uh, that can take some time for people to find that person who's willing to do the comprehensive testing. And once you find that person, uh, you're going to want to look at things like addressing vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Those are really common in people. Um, 
selenium. So let me stop you there. So what would you say with the, with the top mineral and vitamin deficiencies in thyroid patients, what would you say those top mineral deficiencies are? Well, Zinc some of the and selenium, mm-hmm. vitamin Anything? D vitamin is very D. commonly low. Magnesium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Magnesium. But it really depends on the individual. So it's a good idea to do that comprehensive testing. Like hair tissue mineral analysis is a test we're really big fans of because instead of a blood test where you see what's happening in, at, inside my body with you know my micronutrients at this moment in time, you snip a little bit of your hair at you know close to the scalp and you can see what's going on with your vitamins and minerals over the, the last three months. So you get a really comprehensive picture of things like vitamin and mineral imbalances. Um, In addition to that, going back to like, what else do you want to look at to try and get back to where you feel well? You know, maybe it's not that you're able to get off your medication. Some people are, but you know, a lot of us, I'd say probably most of us are going to be on meds for life. Uh, But just feeling better, reducing those residual symptoms like the weight gain, the fatigue, the hair loss, you know, all that stuff. Constipation is really common. Um, The other things you want to look at are things like hormone imbalances. Those are really common. And, And especially for women, you know, our hormones shift so much as we age. So maybe you're coming into your 40s and you're like, whoa, what worked before isn't working now. I need to look at this again. Um, HPA axis stuff like your adrenals, you know, a lot of us are thyroid and adrenal health go hand in hand. So you want to have that tested, look at, you know, what your cortisol is doing throughout the day. Are you having spikes? Are you flatline? Are you just, are you in like complete adrenal exhaustion mode, right? Other testing you could do can do is food sensitivity testing. A lot of us don't realize we're re- reacting to foods that we're eating regularly. I know I had a huge issue with eggs, but I didn't know it for years because it wasn't like I ate an egg and then I got sick. It was just when I eliminated uh, gluten from my diet, like, what do you eat in the morning? You know, it eliminates so many of our typical American breakfast items, right? No more toast, no more bagels, none of that. Pancakes, waffles, you know? So I, and I'm trying to up my protein and eggs are, you know, have a lot of great nutrients. So I was eating more eggs and having horrible stomach issues and gut issues, not realizing that it was eggs. So I learned that from a food sensitivity test and uh, all those stomach issues are gone. I mean, I had, this was severe. This was years. I had all kinds of procedures done to try and diagnose what was wrong with me. I just needed to eat not even no eggs, just less eggs, <laughs> you know? So food, I think food sensitivity testing can be really helpful for people. And then- also, um, I was just going to say, I also think, you know, if you, like you said, if, if you've got your medication optimized, you've got the medicine, you've got it optimized, and you've done some detective work and things, you know, you can do some, you can focus on some things that people don't normally think of like sleep. So for me- I didn't put that much focus on sleep like we should, like now we know we should. So I didn't. And so a year ago I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to do it. You know, you go to bed and you, I wasn't like staying up all hours. It was that I wasn't really kind of intentional about it. And I wasn't really paying attention to how much sleep I was getting or needing. So I put some focus on it during one of our thyroid 30 uh, games and it changed, it changed everything. It shifted everything. Once I started paying attention to my patterns and things and realizing, well, I do really well with seven hours of sleep and I don't do so well on six and a half hours of sleep. You know, it really changed the game for me, but I was just kind of going through life, even though it had been a long life and I wasn't really paying attention to my sleep. So you can do things like that, you know, that things like, like focusing on, you know, like you mentioned nutrition or. Uh, something like that. So for me, sleep was it. Sleep was definitely one of those that you can, you don't have to go to the doctor to, to help. Mm -hmm. Or stress. How stressful is your lifestyle? I mean, Mm -hmm. do you have a super stressful job? Do you have five kids at home and single mom and working three jobs and 
you know, I mean, those kinds of things can really send our health into a, we can end up in a real downward health spiral, even lack of support, you know, just um, not believing that we can feel better, you know, and even like things like emotional root causes, emotional trauma, you know, there's so many things. So yeah, I think after you find that health practitioner and get the comprehensive testing and eliminate some of those maybe hidden underlying issues, the diet and lifestyle piece um, is huge. It is huge. And that's, I think for both Dan and I, that's what we found is like the foundation of our thyroid healthy lifestyles. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Let's talk about iodine for a second. I just took a, I just t- did a full panel on myself and I found out that my iodine was low and iodine is an essential mineral commonly found in seafood, but your thyroid gland uses it to make thyroid hormones, which help control growth, you know, repair damaged cells and just support a healthy metabolism. So Um, I feel like people are in two different camps with iodine. Some people, I've actually just read a whole study on how this guy said iodine is not good for thyroid patients. Then over here, this other guy is saying the main issue with thyroid. I feel like it's a very divided camp on iodine. What is your opinion about iodine and the thyroid? For me, my opinion is that everybody's so bio-individual that it really, you really just don't know until you get tested. You don't know where you fall until you get tested. So, you know, it just depends. Everybody's so different. You've got to know what your iodine levels are before you know which camp you can start heading towards, first of all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's one of those that's really important to talk to your healthcare professional about because it can uh, create issues. You know, most of us who have hypothyroidism have it, it, at least in the developed world, have it because we have autoimmune hypothyroidism. We have Hashimoto's and excess iodine can aggravate the autoimmune response. I know I've tried some, just, you know, with my naturopath's help, have tried some supplements that contain a little bit of iodine and it messes with me a little bit. You know, on the other hand, we have a swimming pool, which has chlorine, which is a bromide, which blocks some of the uh, iodine uptake receptors in the thyroid. So the thyroid can't do its job of producing thyroid hormone. It can like actually reduce your thyroid function. So one of the things I do in the summer months when I'm in the pool a lot is I try to eat a little bit more seaweed. Now, I think it's important to point out with seaweed, the iodine content of various types of seaweed varies drastically. Kelp is like off the charts, off the charts. I mean, it could be dangerous. Wakame, like um, nori, the paper, the seaweed paper that they wrap sushi in, much lower. Oh, less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Like my family, we love those seaweed sheets and I'll like make a point to like include a little bit more, you know, seaweed snacks in my diet in the summer. Like that seems to help me. So it's been a lot of experimentation for me personally and also, you know, talking to my naturopath and working with her as far as avoiding um, an autoimmune flare because of iodine. So as an organization, we're really here to give people options and information and empowerment so that they can make the best choices for their health as individuals. Uh, But, you know, we're not, um, 
we don't really take a stance on you should do this or you should do that with iodine. Or if we have any stance at all, it's, you should definitely educate yourself and be aware that if you're going to eat a bunch of foods that are real heavy in iodine or take an iodine supplement, work with your doctor and be aware that this can create some issues. Yeah. It's funny for me personally, you know, when I, if I take a supplement that's high in iodine, sometimes I don't feel good as well. But if I eat foods that have iodine in them, like fish or shrimp or, you know, some, you know, organic uh, dairy, sometimes I end up feeling better when I eat the foods that have iodine, but when I take a supplement that has iodine in it, I'm, you know, I might feel a little bit worse. So I like you said- I found the exact so same. Yeah. yeah. I it found is. the same thing. Yes, yes, it is. But if you think yeah. about it, you know, we're really made to eat things and not really take supplements. So I guess it makes sense, but yeah, it's so wonky. It is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's like, you know, obviously I'm low in iodine. My te- You know, I just took a blood test. You know, my doctor said, hey, you're low in iodine. And it's funny that I just noticed, especially shrimp. Like, I know if I have like some grilled shrimp or like a grilled piece of tuna, all of a sudden I feel like I have a little bit more energy and a little bit more pep right. in my step. But as soon as I take a, a a pill and supplement that has iodine in it, I can then have the opposite effect. And then I can honestly feel my thyroid not working. So I think that a lot of times it is about, it goes back to the Goldilocks. Like it has to be that perfect amount. And somehow with food, your body can process that better than it can with a supplement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm much more comfortable with thyroid supporting foods than like supplements. I definitely sort of tiptoe and I wouldn't, I, I, (laughs) I take plenty of supplements now and (laughs) believe in them. I mean, they have really helped me so much. I've become a believer, but yeah, I was kind of reluctant to supplement because of, whoa, this makes me feel really weird or worse. Um, Whereas it seems like, you know, those thyroid supporting foods are gentler, smaller dosage. It's not like you're getting this blast that's been processed in a certain way. It's like your body can assimilate all the nutrients that are in there maybe a little bit better. It's also made me more aware to like start paying attention, right? Looking at supplements, looking at my food, looking at labels. It's made me really kind of hyper aware to see, oh, this has iodine. Oh, this doesn't, you know, like I've, I've become, you know, Hyper vigilant with things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all the supplements I take are literally just made with whole foods. And so the second I take a supplement that is a little bit more not whole food based, I don't do well with those either. I really need a supplement that is completely derived from whole foods. So mm-hmm. let's talk about those thyroid supporting foods. Obviously, um, Jenny, you're a chef, right? Yeah. So, um, but let's talk about what foods make you feel like a million bucks. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, I definitely would agree with you that if I can incorporate uh, seafood into my diet two, even three times a week, I, I feel good. So I do feel better from a little bit more of those uh, iodine containing foods. Um, also, you know, the sort of uh, overarching goal for a lot of us is to reduce inflammatory foods. So you're trying to get rid of those processed foods, the sugars, alcohol, um, gluten. A lot of people do well off of all grains, not just gluten containing grains. So, um, you know, I, I enjoy uh, some of the, some people call them pseudo grains, like um, buckwheat, quinoa. They're not actually grains. I do well with a little bit of those, but I do try to minimize grains. Um, meat, I know this is a very personal choice, but uh, from all the nutritionists we've worked with and that are on our advisory panel, there is a consensus that there are a lot of nutrients in meat that help thyroid patients feel better. And I definitely, 
protein is definitely a cornerstone and not just protein, but clean, pasture raised, wild caught, organic, et cetera, you know, grass finished beef and things like that. Um, and then of course, a lot of organic produce of all kinds, some, you know, there's a lot of talk in the thyroid world about goitrogenic vegetables, right? All those crucifers, the broccoli, the cabbage, et cetera. And what we hear from most of our experts now is that um, they've kind of done a 180 on the whole goitrogen thing as far as you should eliminate all those. Instead, the, the party line now seems to be more that these foods are so highly nutritious um, that it's good to eat them in moderation, especially if they're cooked, because cooking reduces the goitrogenic activity in a lot of those vegetables. So um, a lot, I eat a lot of organic produce. I love things like sweet potatoes to replace some of those grains uh, that have, you know, prebiotic fiber and just tons of nutrients. Um, I love zucchini, which is, that's a non-goitrogenic vegetable with tons of fiber, tons of nutrients, low in calories. Um, yeah, there's so many. And then there's other things like that are, have like those specific key thyroid supporting nutrients, like Brazil nuts are really high in selenium. Mushrooms are really high in selenium. Um, magnesium, as Dana mentioned, is another, you know, uh, common deficiency for thyroid patients. You know, you can even get a little magnesium from your dark chocolate. So if I have a, a treat, it's often like a square of very dark chocolate that's got a high percentage of cacao in it, or I'll put cacao nibs on a, the top of a smoothie bowl and get that crunch. And, um, but yeah, a lot of whole foods, a lot of just unprocessed, uh, clean, organic, pasture-raised animal proteins, organic produce, and clean fats. That's, that's sort of the, uh, the foundation of, you know, what we consider thyroid healthy eating. Let's talk about parasites and what role they can play in hypothyroidism. Well, I, you know, that's another thing that you can tell from um, that comprehensive testing, mm -hmm. working with your healthcare practitioner. So uh, people can do what's called a GI map or a stool panel, um, which is like a fancy way of saying poo test. You know, they can <laughs> tell a lot about what's going on in your gut and find, you know, different parasites and things. But yes, parasites can definitely be a underlying root cause for some people and it's good to eliminate that. Well, it can, yeah. it can definitely trigger, you know, uh, gut damage and uh, intestinal permeability. So parasites are one of those things that if you suspect, or even if you don't, a poo sample is a good thing to, <laughs> to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Anything else that you, I haven't already asked you that you can think that's made a real big difference in weight loss and people feeling good with their thyroid? For me, and just for me, I, I feel like uh, taking the pressure off myself because I know a lot of times you go to the doctor and, and you say, well, I've gained weight and I'm depressed and I'm this and that and, you know, here's your thyroid medicine and whatever. And, and they say you need to, you know, eat less and exercise more. And boy, I don't like that party line. No, thank you. But I was a Zumba instructor and I crash my adrenals and I was working out so hard teaching that it was it was giving the reverse effect right and it, it wasn't helping me at all and I felt like you know we grew up with that thinking you got to work out really hard to drop the weight once I forgave myself and once I allowed myself to just get movement and be happy with that movement you know get some sweat in However, that is, if it is just walking or it is doing something very gentle, but I'm still sweating, then I, I just, I notice the pounds coming off and staying off. Once I kind of let myself, my brain, you know, let go of that whole high intensity is the only way. So for me, that really, really helped uh, just letting go of that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you say that because for me as well, when I do, I, I work out every morning and I work out like six days a week, but 
sometimes when I do too much high intensity, when I do more like just a lot of walking or, you know, some different kinds of exercises that don't put me into that super massive high intensity, I actually end up losing more weight. I'm in, in a little bit skinnier position. I, I personally think walking is the great elixir. Yeah. I coach people all the time. And one of the things we do is we add three and a half miles of walking into their routine five to six days a week. And it's just like literally magic. It's like sprinkle magic on there because what happens is I feel like when people work out too much, they're again with their adrenal glands and they're getting so crazy with it. And then it's causing them to eat more like a three and a half mile walk. Doesn't make you go, Oh my gosh, I'm so ravenous. And then they come home and eat everything, but the kitchen sink. But that three and a half mile walk gets them exhilarated. It burns calories and they're not feeling extremely ravenous and getting themselves into these highs and lows. It seems like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your body will tell you what's working and what's not. And I guess that's what I would add is just listen to your body, really develop an ear for the messages that your body is giving you, the feedback it gives you about all those different inputs how much sleep I got, how much caffeine I'm drinking, how intense it, how intense my workouts are. Um, you know, I know a lot of your listeners are into intermittent fasting. We use that, you know, which, which type works for you. And even what time of the month does it feel good to your body? And maybe there's other times of the month. It doesn't feel bad. It feels bad. You know, I know I intermittent fast much more successfully and happily in the first half of the month than in the second half. So I'm just, when I find that it's making me feel bad, the second half of the month, I just don't do as much intermittent fasting, you know, things like that, that you just learn about your body and what works for you by listening to the feedback your body gives you and do what works for you just because it works for your neighbor and your neighbor lost 50 pounds doing X, Y, and Z doesn't mean that it's right for you. And we hear this all the time, you know, like the keto, the keto is working for, because so many thyroid patients are frustrated with trying to lose weight. Some of our um, community and in our thyroid 30 game have had amazing, like miraculous success using keto. Other people, terrible. it makes them feel terrible. So it really depends on the individual. And it's just so important to turn off that com- inner comparison and do what works for you and honor that, you know, what makes you feel good and what's working for you and what's not and do that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been great. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Go we're ahead, all Dana. over social media. You mm-hmm. can find us on Facebook at Thyroid Refresh, on Instagram. We're on Pinterest. We have a really fabulous YouTube channel. You can uh, follow us again at thyroidrefresh.com. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. You guys stay tuned because we have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sempronto Media production. 